Hi everyone, this is Arna from Lambda Island and I wanted to do this quick demo uh, to show you all the awesomeness of Metabase and how you can use it with Datomic. So Metabase is, a, is this sort of business intelligence tool. It's an open source way of digging into your data, of putting your data in the hands of you know, your users or people in your company um, with this quite intuitive query interface. Um, and it's actually written in Clojure, which is quite cool. And I think it's, uh, it's not as widely known in, in Clojure circles as it should be. Um, so it's open source. There's an enterprise version, um, but you can run it for free. You can try it out um, and already do quite a lot with the, with the open source version. Now, Metabase comes with a whole bunch of drivers. So you can plug in you know, your Postgres or your MySQL or all kinds of different databases. Um, but it, until recently, there wasn't a driver yet for Datomic. Now that changed. So the uh, company 11, uh, which is building a quite innovative product for accountants, uh, sort of bringing accounting into the 21st century, they wanted to use Metabase. They were using Datomic. They want to bring the two together. And so they commissioned Lambda Island to build this driver. Um, so. Metabase has a, a pluggable architecture. It's basically a jar that you build, which contains a driver that you put into Metabase's plugin directory. Um, and then you can start creating mm, Datomic databases inside Metabase and start exploring them. Um, now, the easiest way to try this is through the Docker image. So Metabase itself ships uh, a Docker image, which is a quick way to start Metabase and try it out. Um, this Metabase Datomic Docker image is really just the Metabase image plus the Datomic driver added. So um, you can copy paste that into a terminal and you're basically off to the races. So I'm gonna do that uh, docker run lambda island metabase datomic. Now there's two things you're gonna have to uh, keep in mind which is A, that you want to be able to access Metabase, which is running on port 3000 inside this container. And also Metabase is going to want to access your Datomic database and transactor. Um, so for the first one, um, I don't know, where does the P to P goes after the run, right? For the first one, you can do this. So it exposes port 3000. You can say, map that to the port 3000 on my host. Um, for the second one, you typically would make sure that your uh, Datomic transactor is listening on an interface that 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 container can access. Now to make it even easier, uh, I'm just going to do this net is host, which will make Docker use the networking stack of the host machine of my laptop, so that we can just very transparently uh, connect in either direction. So if you run this, it's going to have to download the image first, presumably, but in my case, that image is already there. So now. Metabase is booting up, which takes a little moment, but we'll give it some time. Uh, meanwhile, I'm going to start my Datomic free transactor. Um, of course, you can use this with Datomic uh, Pro as well. Um, quick shout out that there's, uh, if you do want to run Datomic free, that there's actually this pretty convenient wrapper script to start, download, upgrade, uh, stop Datomic free. So um, I find that quite convenient. It's also quite nice if you want to sort of automate installs, um, you know, through uh, through Ansible or whatever. So I've got my transactor, and what I've already done, which I'm not going to show you, but you can figure that out, is there's this uh, Music Brains data set for Datomic, which they also use the closure or the Cognitech text folks use this in the day of Datomic. Uh, workshops. So this is a, a data set that you can download and then load into your local Datomic database so that you have some data to play around with. So I already did that. Um, and so let's see if we can connect to Metabase. All right, here we are. Um, if you did this too soon, then you'll get a screen saying, okay, you know, Metabase is still starting, but that's fine if you refresh a moment later you should be here. Now, because your database is completely empty, or at least your Metabase setup is completely empty, uh, there's no users, there's no database connections. So we need to do a little bit of initial setup first. 
So I'm just going to create that first user. Some dummy password, some dummy company. Okay, next. And then here, like I said, there's, you know, there's quite a bit in there in terms of database support. Um, but the thing that I want to point out now is this one, Datomic. And so we'll call that Music Brains. Uh, I've got the URL here. And then there's a couple driver specific things that you can figure basically by pasting a blob of Eden in there. I'm not going to go into that now. So, okay, now Metabase is starting to scan our uh, Music Brains database. So it's going to figure out uh, which tables it has, which columns those tables have. Uh, for each table, it's going to collect some initial statistics. Um, now, you're thinking Datomic doesn't have tables, um, and so that's absolutely correct. And so there is, well, there was at least a little bit of impotence mismatch there where we sort of had to match uh, Datomic's more, or, uh, more, more document-oriented view of the world onto Metabase's table-based view of the world. Now, typically, um, what most people do, I think, um, for their Datomic schema is they have attributes that are grouped by prefix, by namespace, um, and that are typically used together for a specific type of entity. So say, you know, you have a user entity, then all user entities will have attributes that start with user slash, and then maybe a couple others that don't. And so what the driver is gonna do is it's gonna look at your schema, it's gonna find all those prefixes, consider each of those a table, and then any entity in those table is basically any entity that has any attribute with one with, with that prefix. Um, and any other attributes that come that that occur in entities together with those attributes with that prefix, all of those together are considered the columns of that table. It'll it'll make sense, like like I said, like unless you're doing quite special things with your datomic schema. I find that in most cases, this has actually mapped quite well. So as you can, for instance, see here, uh, Metabase has discovered that we have releases, we have artists, we have labels, tracks, languages, countries. So that's cool. And you can just um, browse to those tables and get your results. Um, you can also already notice a few things. So it, um, it correctly deals with missing values, which was uh, actually a, a little tricky because depending on how you write your queries, um, the atomic will easily filter out uh, entities where, where values are missing that you're looking for. Um, it also has figured out that these, which are really just references, so they, they point to another entity, um, but they're, they point to entities which have an ident. And so in this case, the driver will show you that ident assume that you're kind of using this as a as a sort of enum. So we can, for instance, get all the uh, Spanish artists. All right, so these are all the Spanish artists um, and we can see how many those are. That's 58. Um, and let's, for instance, group those by gender. So there's 10 female, 24 male and 24 uh, other or unspecified. Um, and then, well, let's see, can we maybe also combine this with, uh, well, with the type? What do we get for the type? All right, so this, and this already kind of makes sense here. You see that gender is unset for groups, but it's, it's set for these persons. It's already a, a little insight in the, in the data we got there. Um, let's see if we group these by uh, start here does that tell us anything maybe this uh, makes more sense as a line chart okay so it seems that the groups all started in the 60s and 70s whereas the artists all um, started in the you know 
1910s to to 1950s, which I guess makes sense because this is this data set actually, um, I believe it gives you a slice of uh, data uh, from releases in the 70s. And so it kind of makes sense that you get groups that were started in the 60s and people that were born sort of in the 40s, 50s, 30s. Okay, so what else can we do? Um, you've also seen, so I kind of clicked through here, our data where you can sort of explore these tables, but um, you also get these x-rays, which are kind of um, insights that, that Metabase provides uh, out of the box. So it sort of gives you a, an overview of what's in that table. So we have 4,600 distinct artists of three types, three genders in 68, 68 countries. And then it shows you some groupings. And then you can see here which tables are related to this. So I guess there are releases for artists. And here we already have a, a bunch more. There's four types of packaging, 49 languages. Um, so that's all pretty cool. Um, let's see, can we get some more information here? Okay, so the number of distinct values of script per release name. Yeah, that's perhaps not the most interesting query. And it also seems like we're getting a lot of data back, which is putting some pressure on the front end. Okay, I'm just gonna go reload this um, or actually just go back to the start. to cooperate okay now what I still want to show you is that you can also use this as sort of um, just a, a convenient datomic client so basically whenever you do something like this um, you can also go here to view the SQL um, well, that's what Metabase calls it. This is actually your data log. So this is your native query. Uh, and so now you can start editing that. Now you can see that, you know, like the symbols that are used here. I mean, this is how the driver generates its queries, which is uh, a little funky. There's also some things in there, like for instance, this select, and there's also order by, which are extra data log clauses that we added that are uh, handled by the driver itself. But you don't have to write your queries this way. I mean, you can write some pretty box standard um, data log. Um, uh, if I did that right, then that should give us, there you go, here we have our artist's name. So this is also fun and then, you know, you can still get, you know, visualizations of that. So even just for that, just for having this kind of, you know, GUI datomic uh, client can already be a lot of fun. So I hope it was useful and I hope uh, more people will try it out. So thanks for watching this video.